Hello everybody, my name is Ben Sad Farhani and today I'm going to present you a work Crack Closure Phenomenon by the Electronic Speckle Pattern Interferometry So this work has been performed in the Energy Porto and uh, I'm going to give you a general overview of the, of the work and the model definition, fatty crack generation, experimental setup and the fatty crack measurement, unique short tensile test, loading setup, optical techniques, image acquisition processing on ESPI, DIC setup, crack lens measurement by DIC, and the crack closure for both specimens and also elbow methods by the DIC result. The presentation ends with the conclusions. Overview of the work. This work is, aims at a study of the crack closure phenomena in the cracked specimen. So empty specimens made of aluminum alloy AA6082T6 were prepared and they were fatigued in order to build the cracks with different lengths and the crack lens was measured by the traveling microscope with the um, fatigue cycling test. The cracked specimen were submitted to to the uniquial tensile test at the peak load in order to open the crack and ESPI was used in order to measure the displacement and consequently the formation and the crack lens upon loading. Furthermore, the cracked specimen were loaded and unloaded with the same load intervals and the data was collected and processed by another optical technique, digital image coloration. Virtual clip gauges were defined on the crack flanks and the force displacement upon loading and unloading was monitored based on the Elbers method. So regarding the model definition, two empty specimens with the central notch of 60 mm was manufactured according to the ASTM standard with the width of 80 mm and thickness of 3 mm. So in the image, it is possible to see the general view of the of the specimen and also the material property used for the study. The experimental setup of the fatty crack generation. Uh, in this image, you can see that the specimen mounted in the M in the ten, uh, tensile machine and two traveling microscopes were installed in front and in the rear side of the specimen in order to measure the crack lens and um, in the table you can see some information regarding the loading condition the maximum load was 10k with the ratio of 0.1 so the specimens were identified as MT1 and MT2, middle tension 1 and middle tension 2 with the configuration on the right side which is uh, we just uh, considered uh, the fatty crack as D and the, the fatty crack with the initial notch of AN will uh, per, uh, actually reach A as the crack. So uh, on two tables present the, the, the corresponding um, measurement of the, of the crack with the cycles. And uh, when, when, the, when the, the crack were, cracks were generated in MT1 and MT2 specimens, they were uh, actually mounted in another uh, portable testing machine, which is developed by our research team in Energy. And in the first image, you can see a general view of the machine and also the, the specimen mounted uh, on, the, um, on the machine and the grips. So this machine was, uh, was developed and designed for the purpose of this, uh, for the purpose of a project, which is uh, basically optical techniques, ESPI and digital image coloration should be mounted at in front of the specimen. So due to the nature of ESPI, this machine was developed. And uh, here is the, is some information regarding the optical systems. So there is a camera and the lens specified for the ESPI. And there is also another camera and the lens for, for the digital image coloration. And on and the surface of the specimen was illuminated by the laser. And you can see that there are two laser beams, uh, Y1 and Y2 in the, in the system. So 2D digital image correlation was also the, uh, mounted as you can see in the image. 
Regarding the the first uh, first of all regarding the ESPI, so the image acquisition processing. So first we should capture some uh, reference images as the first image, and the bottom side there is the face map obtained by the carry method, and the, the filter face map obtained by the windowed Fourier transform method, and on on the last image is the difference of the deform and the reference uh, reference images highlighting the interferometry fringes so this is the image pro briefly image uh, processing of the ESPI regarding the the the, the next the stage uh, it is possible also to 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 detect the crack through the discontinuities occurred in the displacement so for instance if we have the notch tip and also the crack tip so there is a discontinuities between these two points and this will be uh, identified as the crack and it will be masked through the image processing and uh, in the second image it is possible to see the notch and the detected crack and also it basically the the espi output is is the radian and it is possible to convert it to to the lens scale displacement through the the equation as you can see in this uh, slide and at the end it is possible to differentiate the the displacement in order to obtain the deformation and the the deformation in the, the in y direction in loading direction can be seen in the in the third image Regarding the digital image coloration, so this is specifically uh, explain the digital image coloration with the lens and the camera and the S piston and also DIC field of view. A four megapixel camera was used with the 60 millimeter lens and the extension tube of 12 millimeter. So the system specification can be found on the right image in the sensor and also Cartesian configurations. Regarding the crack measurement by the digital image coloration, the same scenario was followed here according to the discontinuity. So any discontinuities in the, this, in the displacement can represent the crack. And uh, taking advantage of the ESPI approach, it was possible also to, to detect the notch tip and or the, to detect the crack tip according to the notch tip. And, the disc whatever discontinuities in the in between these two points could represent the crack and it was measured and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, explain to you some information regarding the displacement and the deformation variation for the first specimen so this specimen which is mt1 owns the shorter crack which is uh, well, let's say medium sized crack and on the on the left side is the displacement with the different stage of loading from 300, 750, 4,000, and 10,000 newton. The first image on the on the left, first series of the image of on the left, shows that there is no discontinuity, so no crack. But as soon as we reach the 750 newton, the crack has already established. It, it means that. Uh, in three percent of the peak load there is no crack observed in the espi and dic and it means that uh, after reaching this load which is 750 the crack has already propagated and it is propagating up to uh, 1000 newton it means that in 1000 newton the crack has already reached its full length and once we just loaded up to 4k and 10k so it is fully open widely open on the right side there is a possibility also to see the the deformation obtained from the displacement field for espi and also from the dic results the same thing happened here without without any discontinuities at 300 newton so there is no crack and when we reach 750 the the crack has already established leading to 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 present some some high high values as red and once we just reach the 10 kilonewton so it has been already stable stabilized in shaped at tip 
for the for the second uh, specimen which is mt2 it, this specimen owns a, a larger crack which is the, actually on the limit of the of the crack lens proposed by astm so here there is no crack closure observed because when we have even reaching 220 newton so the crack is already opened and uh, we have these continuities it is it can be shown in the ESPI and DIC displacement and once we approach to loading up to the peak load so this phenomenon is just getting uh, stronger so on the right side the longitudinal deformation is also put into evidence that uh, we have already the, the strain high strain values on the crack flanks and this is related to to the crack existence in the structure Regarding the Elber method, it, it should be noticed that two clip gauges were, uh, virtual clip gauges were considered on the crack flanks and the displacement on, on upon loading and unloading were uh, monitored by the digital image coloration and what we have got from the um, a displacement, discontinuities in the displacement and the deformation is also evidence here. So at 300 Newton, we have the local opening and closure and once we reach the one kilo Newton, it has been already fully opened. And when we approach to 10,000 10, Newton, so the, this is the widely open region. The conclusions of this work uh, are the following. Two specimen, two empty specimen with the central notch were fatigued to generate the cracks with the different lengths identified as MT1 with the short crack and MT2 with the longer crack. The crack closure phenomenon was studied by ESPI through the crack detection of with the discontinuities occurred that the displacement upon loading for both specimen 2D digital image correlation was used in order to monitor the displacement and the deformation field. And the same methodology was applied to measure the crack lens and verify the crack closure phenomenon resulting from the ESPI. The obtained result indicate that with the longer crack MT2 did not experience the crack closure even in the 2% of the peak load, while the other specimen with the shorter crack underwent the crack closure at 3% of the peak load. Regarding the the specimen with the shorter crack, which is MT1, using DIC and data and based on the Elber method, it was possible to monitor the displacement up and loading and loading and unloading with the same load intervals. And the virtual clip gauges positioned in the crack flanks, the results show that the crack started opening at the 3% of the peak load and it reached its full length at 10% of the peak load. The crack closure phenomenon was also studied through virtual displacement and the deformation for the for MT1, and the, it, the result showed that the crack is fully opened at uh, one kilonewton. Thank you very much for your attention.